Hello and welcome back as we continue on with the Scarlet Hollow series. Or as it may otherwise be known as it's turning into the Thirsty Hollow series. Thank you to Sammy for leading me down the path of almost turning this into a dating sim. Ah, I hope everybody's having a great day today. I myself, uh, yeah, it's not been too bad. I didn't stream yesterday because, well, uh, it was my wedding anniversary. <laughs> and as much as I wanted to stream, I also didn't want to die. So I made a decision. <laughs> Now, I'm uh, married to my lovely wife for three years now and appreciate her every single day and happy to put off streaming for a day in order to do that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, made her a really lovely special dinner and we spent some time together and it was just a really nice, quiet, kind of uh, lovely anniversary. Just the two of us staying in, enjoying each other's company and having some steak. <laughs> So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Scarlet Hollow. Uh, let me just notify Sammy here, as usually requested here. All right, so that's done. Uh, all right, Scarlet, Scarlet Hollow, let's get to it. Load up the game that we just left. All right, so um, let's see. We just got done talking with uh, Kanika in her van. And the general tentative plan at the moment is to run away together. <laughs> but first, we're going to do this ghost hunting thing because... <laughs> Hi, Sammy. <laughs> uh, I love you. <laughs> We're going to do this ghost hunting thing because it is important to our friend here and uh, we cannot make our exit from the town of Scarlet Hollow until we have done this. So, part five, we begin. You and Kanika make your way to the library. It's busier than usual and a small crowd is formed in a corner in the main foyer. Hi, Gretchen. Look at you, Gretchen. Hey. Yes, the gang's here. Uh, the whole gang's here. I've been waiting to introduce Mike to the mayor for like the entire time I've known him, which has been like, what, 36 hours? It'll be worth it. Trust us. All right, shall we? We shall. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> You could have given me 127 guesses. I never would have guessed that the mayor was a dog. <laughs> mayor, look at that, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy! I can still talk to the mayor. I have the animal speak trait. We're going we're gonna to get down to brass tacks. This mayor and I are going to have some conversations. Not only is this mayor a dog, but judging from the series of portraits lining the walls, every mayor of Scarlet Hollow has also been a dog. Okay. I take back what I said. I want to move to Scarlet Hollow. I know that it's a rundown coal mining community that has seen some bad times and it's generally not the most pleasant place, but every mayor has been a dog. This is heaven. Yes, you can move in with me. All of us will move over to Scarlet Hollow and we will, we will definitely take part in any celebration that the mayor oversees because it's a dog. <laughs> You can tell this dog is the mayor from his little sash and fancy top. The fancy little top hat. Come on. There's a regal air about him, almost as if he knows the position of authority he's been elected to. He's getting elected to it. It's not even like a symbolic gesture of uh, appointment. He's elected by the populace. This is fantastic. I love it. And unless you're mistaken, the serious man by his side is Deputy Franklin, one of the policemen you spoke to following your encounter in the woods on Monday. Good morning, citizen. I don't believe we've met. 
He holds out his paw as if to shake your hand. Um, it's lovely to meet you, Mr. Mayor. The security stops me from shaking his paw. My but his paw, look at it, his paw. No paw shaking, only head pats and ear. Okay, uh, you know what, I will, <laughs> head pats and ear scratches are fine. I must apologize for my security detail. He has my best interests at heart, but he can be a little gruff at times. Oh, gruff. Um, <laughs> I knew he'd be a dog. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, there's something very serious going on in town. We need your help. Yes. Let's talk to, uh, let's talk to the mayor. Murmurs stir in the crowd behind you as you relay the danger to the mayor. Of course, the pet disappearances. I've been made aware of the situation. But what do you expect me to do about it? It's autumn. That's tourist season in Scarlet Hollow. I can't turn away the lifeblood of this town. Don't you do this to me. Don't you make the mayor a dog and then turn him into the mayor from Jaws. Don't. Mm -mm. There was a mine collapse last night. We don't need any more news of a disaster coming out of Scarlet Hollow. Do you understand? So you know there's monsters laying eggs in the local animals and you're just going to let it happen? The murmurs behind you intensify as you continue your conversation with the mayor. Laying eggs? Don't be ridiculous. I'm sure that whatever is causing these disappearances is just a bear or a mountain lion. It's the mayor from Jaws. God damn it. <laughs> it's the mayor from Jaws. We all smell them up in those hills. They'll move on soon enough. This is a southern town. Plenty of people are armed around these parts. Yeah, that didn't help. Uh, what's, you know, no face, dude. They'll take care of the problem before it gets out of hand. And in the meantime, it's best not to cause a panic. I'm a pillar of this community. It's my job to protect, project strength to my constituents. I've heard, I've heard just about enough from you, Jimmy. Yes. You tell them, Gretchen. Here we go. Gretchen's not here. Yeah. Look at you putting on a show in front of your darn fans while the dogs of this town are snatched up by monsters in the woods, hoping the humans will clean it all up for you. Fucking right, Gretchen. When, you are, when are you finally going to do something meaningful for the hairier citizens of Scarlet Hollow? Now, Miss Gretchen, there's no need. Scraps never would have let those things prowl the woods for so long. And yet you sit back, waiting for the humans to notice, and let more innocent dogs suffer. You know, I almost lost my life to those things the other night, and my goodness, haven't you heard about poor Duke? Now, Gretchen, a lot of those were old dogs. It's fair of me to assume they simply went to the big farm upstate. Oh. Ah, don't you dare talk to me about old dogs. Um, I'm not involving anybody else in this. This is between me, the mayor, and Gretchen, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, she's got a good point, Mr. Mayor. You're damn right I do. <laughs> Scraps would have been out in those woods at the first sign of trouble, tearing out the throats of any creature who dared threaten the dogs of Scarlet Hollow. Yet here he is, posing for the rectangles like nothing is wrong in this town. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Gretchen squirms in Stella's arms, straining to get to Mayor Jimmy. Okay, Gretchen. Um, uh, heel. <laughs> Simmer down now. Hey, whoa, Gretchen, calm down. I'm going to pull a muscle. Mr. Franklin, I think now's a good time to dispose of this riffraff. Oh, you fucker. I was so on board with you. I was your biggest fan right from the get-go. Mr. Richmond, I'm going to have to ask you and your... Miss Richmond, I'm going to have to ask you and your dog to step away from the mayor. I should have known too better. These two have never been able to get along. Mike, you got to fill me in on the feud later. I've always been curious about why Gretchen gets so fussy near Mayor Jimmy. Because he's a dick. And Gretchen's awesome. Stella walks off, still struggling to hold Gretchen. And she shouts insults back at Jimmy. In great! Now do well, you, you dog! <laughs> Kanika is quick to follow. Oh, all right. Bye, Kanika. Follow. I don't have. Oh, I don't want to. I want to talk to the mayor. I'm not done with this. All right. I'm done with this. 
It looks like everyone else is already talking to Oscar in the next room. Oh, geez, hi. Before you catch up to your companions, you're intercepted by a nervous man with a cross around his neck. Oh, shit. Sounds like old Gretchen and the mayor have some unresolved issues, wouldn't you say? I'm Pastor Daniel. I take it you're Mike. Everyone's been buzzing about you. <laughs> the Jovi. I'm so sorry about your aunt, but I'm sure she's in a better place now. I don't know. Not from what I hear about my aunt. <laughs> um, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard she was awful. <laughs> better place. Uh, I don't know where you're getting your information from, Padre. Oh, I'm sure she wasn't that bad. Oh, I'm sure she was. Most people are good deep down inside. It's best not to speak ill of the dead. You know what? I've never really subscribed to that. I think if people, if you want people to speak well of you when you're dead, then maybe earn it while you're alive. Uh, hey, do you know anything about ghosts? Uh, the Holy Ghost. Have you heard of the Trinity? Um, no. Janie mentioned you this morning. Yeah, okay. That woman is the light of my life. I'm so glad she's there to help your cousin through this rough patch. All right. Uh, let's see. Talk to animals. Oh, Gretchen says she didn't vote for the mayor. The mayor is a huckster and a fraud. The bastard cares more about... I, I don't know this guy. I don't know what, like, bearing all my information out to him would even yield. I should go back off, preacher man. <laughs> back off, preacher man. I ain't buying one yourself. <laughs> Well, I'm going to regret that one. Uh, don't worry. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Just thought I'd extend the offer in case you needed someone to talk to. The church's doors are open if you ever change your mind. Have a blessed day, Mike. Okay, well, at least he was gracious in, <laughs> in my ass hattery. The pastor leaves UB and joins the line to see the mayor. I will not shake his paw. I don't care if he does offer it again. And what? A, by the way, what a dick move was that? Holding his paw out and then knowing his security detail wouldn't let me do that. I should have known there was something up with that fucking dog, Jimmy. What is it about Jimmy and video games that I play with you, Sammy? <laughs> All right, go after them. Oh, my God. Poor Rosalina. I can't even imagine how scary this has been for her. Jimmys are always assholes. She seems in high spirits now, right now, but they've got her on some pretty strong pain medication, so I'm not sure how she's going to feel when that wears off. Pretty sure in pain. And it was the whole, oh shit, she lost her whole foot. Yeah, it's bad, but she's alive. We'll both be able to move on from this. We just have to get through the tough parts first. F -f foot? Um, yeah. Well, we're here for you. Uh, yeah, we're here for you, man. Thank you, all of you. Everything feels like it happened so fast. Well, I mean, it kind of did. I know our whole lives have changed, but it's taken my mind a little bit to catch up. I feel like such a mess. I hope it isn't keeping me from being the dad she needs right now. Oh, Oscar. I'm sorry to cut our conversation short, but I better get going. I was only supposed to come back to pick up a few things, but then the hospital called and said there'd, there'd been some big bus accident on the highway and they need the bed, so I have to come pick her up. Even though her house is still haunted and the only place she can lie down until then is the dirty back room that drove her away in the first place. And Mayor Jimmy Day is happening. Oh, <laughs> It's not his last name. Mayor Jimmy Day is happening. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm just a little overwhelmed. Well, at least you only have to bring her one shoe. It's okay, Oscar. We're here to help. Yeah, we're going to get that ghost. We could always go ahead and do a ghost bust or whatever we're calling it while you're out, and she'd be able to go right back to her old room as soon as she got back. That's probably a good idea, right? If only, but it doesn't come out during the day. So any busting attempts are going to have to wait until nightfall. I'm still not even sure we can get rid of it at all. Neither am I. I think I'd have to see for myself that it was gone. It managed to trick me a couple of times and I can't handle any more surprises right now. I've got every ghost hunting device known to man. You're in good hands, Oscar. Uh, <laughs> we have the power of friendship on our side. <laughs> Heck yeah, we do. <laughs> Go team. If anime has taught me anything, it's that the power of friendship is unstoppable. Yeah, really, Sammy. That's a lovely sentiment. I'm sure Rosalina will be at least glad to know that you all did your best to help her. I'm heading out. It should be dark by the time we get back, so I suppose I'll see you all then. Oscar hurries off. Key, car key is jingling as he jogs out the door. 
Let's head up to Reese's. Maybe we can get him to come ghost hunting with us. Oh no, you're not going to try and get Dr. Kelly to let him leave the house, are you? She'll kick us out for even... What is it with this Reese? I mean, maybe he's an upstanding dude, but he sounds like he's too sick to even just like have a meal, much less leave the house. And they're kind of forcing this whole thing. I wonder if he even knows what happened last night. I don't know how disconnected he is from the news around town. Jeez, should we tell him? Reese is the dude that we went to go visit, but his mom stopped us at the door and, yeah, like I said, he's too sick. We can't even go in and talk. Gosh, I don't know. Maybe we just play it by ear. Anyway, shall we? Time to go. Uh, so about the mayor. Yeah. Uh, right. You seem to have some choice words for him. Damn right. He uh, he's corrupt. The dog cares about more about, um, Yeah. That dog cares more about tourist money than protecting the town. Does Scarlet Hollow even get tourists? Kanika laughs. We get a few who all come to see the mayor. The plot thickens. Um, why, would, why would I invite Tabitha? She's been awful. No. And why would I invite Avery? No. Um, yeah, what's up with the, uh, I know there's a conversation going on. Let's find out what's going on with Pastor Daniel, though, real quick. It was only a matter of time until he tried to pull you aside about grief counseling. When my dad died, I had to ban him from the general store for a week. Yeah. He wouldn't stop leaving these little pamphlets at the checkout. Yeah. I don't know where he finds so many. Chicktracks.com. Um... Yeah, that's all I had. <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. I met him. He has been met. I have no opinions on the man. Wow, really? I always thought he made a memorably skin-crawling first impression. Yeah, he has the tendency to stick in people's minds for one reason or another, and they're almost never good reasons. The man was grinning through all my dad's funeral. Ew. As far as I'm concerned, he's a ghoul. And I don't mean that in a stigmatizing mental illness kind of way. There's just this little siren that goes off every time I see him that tells me to get away from him. That's exactly how I would describe it, too. Aw. The whole town feels the same way. Now that I think about it, he must be pretty lonely. Oh, He can look for friends somewhere else. Eh. All right. Um, let's head to Reese's. Off we go. The three of you leave the library for an early dinner at Reese's. Oh, that's right. We were invited to dinner. Yeah. Okay. Now I remember. You once again find yourself in front of Reese's house. A cold hesitation grips you as the building looms over the hilltop. Though it's only early afternoon, it feels much later, the sun already sinking behind the tall mountains that surround Scarlet Hollow. We're a little early. What if Dr. Kelly yells at us? There's no such thing as early when you're hanging out with friends. There's just extra time you get to spend together. Yeah. Yeah, this is getting a little too, like, the little toxic positivity going here. Okay, but what if she yells at us? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he looks too sick to go ghost hunting. I'm just saying. It's too late. The door swings open. Hey, Reese. Oh my God, dude, it's been ages. You must be Mike, right? I heard a lot about you. Stella's been relentless about making sure I got all the Mike updates. Thanks, Stella. Not creepy at all. My goodness gracious, my goodness gracious, there's something that smells terribly off about that boy. Get away from my Stella, you fiend. Gretchen starts yelping at Reese, straining against Stella's grip as she tries to get between them. Hmm. Are they here already? Whoop! Oh, time to get yelled at. I knew you'd show up early, Stella, and you brought the dog. Great. Yeah, I thought she might cheer Reese up. I don't know what's gotten into her all of a sudden. The dog stays outside. Oh, Gretchen. It's okay, Stella. We can let her chill in my van for a bit. I'll run the AC and leave her some treats. You know I always have some of those easy-chew dog jerkies stashed away. The gull, the gumption, this is a violation of my rights. <laughs> but we go everywhere together. I like Stella in that regard. Do you want to come in or not? Oh, God. Everybody's such an asshole in this game. You keep her safe from that monster, Mikey, here. You don't let a feather of harm fall on my darling Stella. <laughs> well, what about you, Mike? Are you coming in? I don't, I'm, I'll toss a coin, find out. I'm kind of, I'm on the fence. 
Uh, well, yeah, Gretchen called you a monster, Reese. <laughs> I can talk to dogs, and that dog, she thought you were something. Um, I'll wait for Stella and Kanika. Fine. God, why is everybody so awful? The quiet sets in as you wait for Stella and Kanika to come back from the van. Okay, we're back. Great, let's get this over with. <laughs> it's going to be a great dinner, everybody. The house feels cold. Not only is there an odd chill in the air, but the building itself feels too sterile, uncomfortably tidy to the point where you're nervous to touch anything. If it weren't for the aroma of store-bought dinner rolls baking in the oven and the unsettling heart artwork hanging on the walls, you'd be half convinced you'd wandered into a real estate showing. So how can I lend a hand? By sitting down at the table and not puttering around in my kitchen. Doc! Come on, Doc. I made sure everything was well done well in advance, so the only thing left are the dinner rolls, which shouldn't be long. Then we can have a quick dinner and you can leave my house and go on about your business. Doc! But I was kind of hoping to see Reese's new art. We still have time now, right? You aren't seriously considering subjecting your friends to your disaster of a room, are you? It's not that bad. You can still see the floor. That's my metric of success. Dr. Kelly raises a single questioning eyebrow. I don't mind a little mess. Yeah, I doubt it could be any worse than the way I keep my room. <laughs> way to sell yourself, Kanika. Yeah, okay, fine. As long as you stay out of the kitchen, I don't care what you do that up to. Cool. We'll be downstairs. You won't even know we're here. You make your way towards the basement stairs. The basement is what you might expect out of a tortured artist who spends all his time confined in a studio. Discarded canvases line its edges while trash and sketches leak out from their piles in the corners of the room, hiding the bare cement floor. Ghoulish faces coat the walls in paint, sneering out at their creator. Your mom is so scary. She can be a little intense, kind of overprotective, which I guess makes sense. Anyway, make yourselves comfortable. You'll have to forgive the mess. I've been distracted lately. Haven't been cleaning much. Uh, yeah, your mom's scary. Now that's already been covered. Uh, so Estella told you everything that's been happening. Your host is going to be rough. What are you, what are you sick with? Your art. Um, so you three go way back. If you need someone to pose for your paintings this week. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if you need someone to pose. Uh, that's so kind of you to offer. If you're okay with hanging out at weird hours, I'd love for you to come by and sit for me. Can I bring Dustin? I have an opossum. He can sit with me right in my lap. We can, we can pose. It's been a long, I, uh, if it gives me the option, I'll ask about the movie Rex. See what, uh, see what movie Rex this guy comes up with. It's been a long time since I've been able to draw anybody but myself. I'd really appreciate the company. Quite a movie collection you got. Here we go. Let me think. Oh, have you heard of uh, Shinochi Deathblood? I saw that for the first time recently and it blew me away. Excellent example of both Japanese horror and found footage done right. We could even put it on after dinner if you guys were interested. Fuck yeah, I'd be interested. Uh, it's not real to my knowledge. But I don't know everything. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Dang, I'd usually be down for that, but we've got to head over to Oscars after this. But it's a Japanese found footage horror movie. Kanika, come on. Nighttime lasts for a long time. And, you know, we're talking like an hour and a half, a little, little wedge of the night. All right. We promised we'd ghost bust his place. He's apparently been dealing with a bad haunting. And I feel like we should really be there for him tonight, considering everything that's happened. He and Rosalina both need our support right now. Okay, that's a good point. She lost her foot. I can put off watching a movie and help her out. Uh, we could always ditch. This movie sounds good. <laughs> Yeah, we'll remain silent. Um, Want to come ghost hunting with us tonight? Oh, wow. Do you think you'd be down for that? We'd love to have you. Yeah, it'd be great to have you along. That would be so, so amazing. But I haven't had the best of luck leaving the house lately. Even just walking to town is enough to put me in bed for a week. It sucks. No. But make sure to bring your camera, Stella. I want to see everything that happens. 
Uh, okay, dinner's got to be ready by now. Almost on cue, Reese's mom shouts from the kitchen. Dinner's on the table, and then you can leave, like, quickly, because I hate you all. Guess that's it for catching up. <laughs> Make sure you all wash your hands with soap. I don't want anyone sharing the germs at the dinner table. Sure thing, Doc. <laughs> I'm allergic to soap. Can't wash my hands. Yes, ma'am. You make your way towards the sink, but are stopped in your tracks by the pull of an odd door at the end of the hallway. It feels out of place, like you've accidentally wandered into a old, different, older house. But more than that, you feel something radiating out from behind it, something dark and cold. Something that reminds you of the dusty tunnels you narrowly escaped last night. An oppressive hum just beyond your hearing fills the air and you feel strange. Ooh, are we going to go into the back rooms? You are compelled to approach the door, drawn in as if hypnotized. <laughs> Do I have any other option? Nope. We're going to open the door. Before you know it, the doorknob is turning in your hand, your heart full of both deep dread and a compulsive need to know what might be on the other side. What do you think you're doing? Oh, gee. Well, um. Uh, return to the door. <laughs> you won't let her interrupt you. You need to know what's behind that door. Damn right I do. I'm curious now. Oh, no, you don't. Come on, wash your hands and sit down. She grabs you by the shoulder, yanking you away. You do as she says, cleaning up under her watchful eyes and allowing yourself to be ushered back to the table and away from the door. Ah, Other than the door, lady! <laughs> Dinner is already laid out. Dinner rolls, spaghetti, and a light salad. Kanika anxiously picks at her food. Stella is nervously talkative, and Reese is suddenly quiet and tense, his shoulders tight as his mother perches on the chair next to his. Dr. Kelly eyes all of you with a sharp, fierce glaze. Gaze. <laughs> She sits opposite you at the far head of the table, her features silhouetted against the light of the setting sun in the window behind her. Pills. <laughs> she slides a few tablets towards Reese. He obediently swallows them. This is excellent, Dr. Kelly. Is the pasta sauce homemade? No, it's from a jar. I work too many hours to make my own pasta sauce. Well, you have excellent taste in brands. If you ever want any tips on easy home-cooked pasta sauces, you know I... No, thanks, Stella. I have the internet if I need recipes. Uh, thanks again for having us, Dr. Kelly. We really appreciate it. Your hospitality has been just fucking stupendous. You know, I think I saw a video online about a family like yours. Turns out the mom was poisoning her kid for 18 years. Oh, we're going six cents on this fucker. Uh, explore about Reese. Small talk. The danger. What's the door? <laughs> oh, oh, God, I'm... Saving my game. <laughs> you know, I think I saw a video that mom was poisoning her kid. <laughs> the dinner table goes quiet. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I saw that one, too. Wild stuff. Thank you, Stella. Having my back. Is that so? The silence returns. Seconds feel drawn out like minutes. Dr. Kelly's eyes briefly nervously glance toward her son before flitting back to a position of annoyance. Hmm. Hmm. You can't help but feel like what you saw went beyond compassionate worry to be genuine fear. Hmm. The danger. Um. <laughs> Let's see. Um. Wayne! You know Sam Wayne? Dr. Kelly takes a moment to think. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Someone you know? Someone who's been following Mike around. Super mysterious guy. We have reason to believe he might have caught some kind of weird illness at the mines. He definitely looks like he could use some medical help. So please let us know if he shows up or anything. If there's someone harassing you, you should get the police involved. This isn't any of my business. Yeah, the police have been super helpful. Uh, let's see. Have the police contacted you about... There is no body. He went missing. So, yeah. So, I mean, there's really no... Nothing there. Uh, she's not going to answer about any weird hairless creatures. Um, she's not a vet. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh, it's uh, any hallucinations. I'm not at liberty to discuss private. Yeah, I kind of figured. Are you sure? Not even a little bit. <laughs> you want to break your oath just a smidge? It could help our investigation into the strange goings-ons. It's not like you have to name names. Investigation into what? The mind collapse? I think this is best left to professionals, Stella, not someone who runs around in the woods with a camcorder. <clears throat> Judging by the police response so far, Dr. Kelly, I don't think it is. We saw some stuff down in the mines last night that I struggled to explain. Maybe if we knew if there were any miners suffering from hallucinations, we could just rule it out as a gas leak, but... You were an abandoned mind. The chances you were huffing something dangerous and hallucinatory are through the roof. That's a fair point, actually. Leave it at that and treat it as the tra tragic accident it was, not some kind of mystery to unravel. Hmm. Hmm. All right. She is sus. Um, I don't see any point in small talk. She's not going to talk about Reese. But let's see what her options are. Does no one in this town have two parents? Oh. <laughs> Saving my game. <laughs> no one has. <ever>. Oh. <laughs> uh, Dr. Kelly's glare intensifies. <laughs> Small towns are full of drama. People meet when they're young and reckless, and it doesn't always work out long term. Plus, these hills are dangerous. <laughs> these hills are dangerous. And there's and the jobs even more so. Things happen. Not everyone gets some fairy tale ending. You can find happy endings any anywhere though. It doesn't have to be perfect, but people can still be happy even if bad things happen to them. I guess living in a denial is a kind of happiness, sure. All right. Um I do regret that one. <laughs> I'm gonna go back on that one. <clears throat> Uh, why are you so about to give you son from Reese as a talented artist? He must be. Reese is a talented artist. You must be very proud of him. He has a lot of skill honed through practice and dedication. I can't say I understand a lot of his pieces, but of course I'm proud. Well, that's good. You don't always have to understand, but you know, that's fine. Thanks, Doc. Why is he calling his mom Doc? <laughs> That seems a little odd. Yeah, return. We may... What kind of small talk we got here? <laughs> Lie, the food's really good. Um... <laughs> have you ever seen a dead body? I have. I thought about it, but I mean, she's not going to say, but okay, let's find out why he's sick. Um, what exactly does he have? Here we go. I'm not poisoning my son. So you can stop with the thinly veiled accusations. He has a combination of genetic diseases that give him a fragile immune system, among other things. It's too much to get into a lot of technical terms that I'd have to explain. It's not good dinner talk and it can't be pleasant for him to have to hear it again. So let's drop it. I'm fine talking about it. There you go, Reese. I'd rather we talk about something else. <laughs> the tension at the dinner table reaches a breaking point. All right, that's enough. Ooh, we, rip, rip, we, <laughs> we crossed the line. Dr. Kelly is interrupted by Reese before she can finish her thought. So we were talking about maybe watching a movie sometime this week while Mike is still in town. We'll have to see how you're feeling. I can handle a movie, Doc. Why is he calling her Doc? There's something odd about this. I mean, there's something odd about everything in this game, but that is a little, that's odd on top of odd. Yeah, we'll just sit downstairs in the dark. He Reese is used to that. <laughs> He's used to sitting in the dark and not doing anything. I'm sure he'll be okay. You're always overestimating just how much you're able to do, Reese. This is why you keep getting sick. If I get sick, so what? It's not like that's ever going to change. I'm sick every day and I'm not getting better. I don't want to spend... The last few miserable years of my life hold up in the basement alone just because seeing my friends has been deemed too strenuous. Yeah. I'm an adult for God's sakes. I can't believe I have to ask for permission from my mom just to have friends over. Oh. Reese stops mid-sentence, wincing in pain and wrapping himself in his arms. Oh, it was that jarred spaghetti sauce. Uh, yeah, that's, that's wreaking havoc. Don't say things like that. I'm doing everything I can to try and fix... 
Silence as Dr. Kelly's eyes shoot open. Reese? Reese abruptly pulls himself from the table and leaves. Damn it, I knew it. I knew this would be too much. Everyone, get out of my house. Please, just leave us alone. Stop trying to interfere with his life. All it does is hurt him more. Sure thing, as soon as I go through that door. Promise. But we can't just leave him like this. Now is when he needs friends the most. No, now is when he needs me the most. I am his doctor and his mother, and Munchausen's is definitely not something that's on the table. So, nah. I know you care about him. I know that, and he knows it too. But all any of you would do is get in the way of my <laughs> proxy parenting. <laughs> so just leave, please. Door. Door. Um. <sighs> saving. We're, we're really like on a lot of like socially precipice kind of areas here. Um. <laughs> he seemed fine before dinner. Just saying. It always comes in waves, and I can assure you right now, right now he's very much not fine. Now leave. The three of you are rushed to the door. We'll be back, Reese. I hope you feel better soon. Don't eat any more of your mom's food for no reason. Dr. Kelly shuts the door in your faces. The click of a lock signals the end of your dinner at Reese's. Do you really think Reese's mom is poisoning him? If she is, I swear to God. She wouldn't. That's just so horrible. Who could do something like that to their own kid and for so long? No, no, there's no way. Y'all are barking up the wrong tree. Speaking of barking... Where's Gretchen? It seems far-fetched and it's definitely rare, but I don't think we can rule it out. Yep. Yeah, let's talk about the door. Forced how? It was like something was making me go there. I had a million options, but none of them were not to go through the door. I wonder, was it like that carving in the pit last night? Carving in the pit. Before you had the, that seizure, it was kind of like you were hypnotized. No. I'm trying to remember that now. <laughs> I didn't really have a good angle from the top of that ladder, but I guess I'll take your word on it. Hypnotism seems like a step up from what we've been dealing with, though. I mean, I don't know. A lot happened last night, but the whole thing was very trance-like. Um, I guess it was kind of similar, sure. What if there's another carving in there? That'd be so weird. And it'd probably be dangerous. The last time you saw one of those things, you had a seizure and almost died. It's not like Dr. Kelly's going to let us visit again anytime soon. I don't think we have to worry about steering clear of her private orifices. Ah, uh, let's see. Did either of you get the impression that Dr. Kelly is afraid of Reese? Well, I'm, that's my keen eye. I'm going to use my keen eye ability. I could have sworn I saw genuine fear in her eyes for a second there. Is he a vampire? Oh, is he a vampire? Are you sure she wasn't just being overprotective? Yeah, I'm sure that's all that's going on, and she has every right to be. I mean, the poor guy took two bites of food and got sick immediately. I can't imagine what that's like for the both of them to go through. He's a vampire. If anyone is afraid of anyone in that house, Reese is afraid of his mom because he's a vampire. I think you're both reading into things too much. Dr. Kelly is good people. Yeah, she seems to be just fantastic. Look, I'm just saying, maybe there's more to their dynamic than just him being sick, but it's not like there's much more we can do about it right now. We could probably go back and forth over this for a while. Let's grab Gretchen and get going. The sun is setting and we wouldn't want to miss a second of ghost action. I agree. Let's move forward with some action and get some creepiness going. Stella hurries off down the hill, almost as if to run away from what just happened. You and Kanika follow her down in the slowly darkening street. Lit by the orange hues of the setting sun, the library feels different. What was once a quaint building in a small town now stands as an imposing structure. Its walls holding something that stares back at you with menace. I'm confused. Um, I thought they were staying in the library because their house was haunted. Why are we going to the library and not the house that's haunted for the ghost hunt? Let's find out. 
Maybe Stella's right. Maybe ghosts aren't real and the rest of tonight is going to be a pleasant break from the events of the past few days. Before you enter, a pair of figures in the nearby bush catch your eye. Oop, look at them over there. That's creepiness. Then this over here. Any others? This up here. Oh, that's creepy. Oh, that's the creeps. You can't help but feel that with every passing day, the ditchlings grow bolder. Enter the library. Just as its exterior was intimidating in the setting sun, the interior of the library is dark, its shadows deep and foreboding. The meet and greet with the mayor ended quite some time ago, and the throngs of visitors took whatever joy was in this place with them as they left. Hey, Oscar, are you back yet? Shh, you can't yell in a library. It's against the rules. <laughs> It's after hours. Rules only apply before 5 p.m. Now it's our domain. Hey, you're just in time. Rosalina's situated in the back room. Alexis is going to keep her company while we hopefully... Oh, Oscar's coming with us. Okay. Okay. All right, we're good. He's got a dad bod thing going. It's not... Yeah. It's working. I'd love for her to be able to sleep in her own bed tonight. How is she doing? She's not quite as chipper as she was when she was on her stronger meds, but she's still doing surprisingly well. Alexis has been by her side nonstop. She's been a really good friend. Rosaline and I are both lucky to have her right now. <laughs> uh, I'm glad she's back home at least, and we'll be able to get her back into her real home in no time. I've come fully loaded. Got my EMF reader, temperature gauge, spirit box, infrared camera, UV light, video cameras, salt flashlights for everybody in case the ghost messes with the electricity, parabolic microphone, sharpies for paper for automatic writing, matches, and candles for rituals. She doesn't have a dots projector, Sammy. Doesn't have everything. And you've got your specter sniffing compatriot at your side too. Oh, it's Gretchen. So, boop, boop. And you've got your Spectre Sniffing compatriot at your side too. 42 minutes into the stream, and I I finally messed up Gretchen's voice. This nose can sniff out any, any narrow well do that we might find, whether the spirit or scoundrel. Oh, and a Ouija board. Oh, good. I know they're toys. No, they're not. But you never know what might come in handy. Wow, this is a lot of ghost hunting stuff or something that was so last minute. Do you just have this stuff ready to go in a bug out bag or something? Of course I do. I actually stashed a couple of bags here overnight after I got back from the mines. Excuse me? I wasn't about to carry everything around all day. This way we can go in light and pop out to grab more stuff once things start getting spooky. Yeah, it's just like, it's just like Phasmo. I just had a really, really, like, hard burp. <laughs> I may never have found any compelling evidence against ghosts, but that's not for the lack of trying. And after last night, I'm more than ready to try again. Um, yeah, there were ditchlings out there. Everyone. Yeah, we do need to play Phasmo soon. Definitely. I can stream it on Twitch. <laughs> I got a bad feeling about this. There were ditchlings in the bushes outside. Who knows how many more are looking around out here? That's concerning. Are we sure it's safe to be around them? No. If St Sybil's right, we're only going to see more of them as time goes on. We can't let them get in the way of things. Um, no, that seems to remain silent. Let's go. Let's go hunt. I admit I did get a little caught up in the whole supernatural atmosphere of that place, but those sounds were definitely from the rocks shifting before the collapse. I mean, that's the whole basis of the Tommy Knockers myth. It's well documented. Those creatures in the woods, though. Oh my god, Neeks, you're actually starting to come around, aren't you? No, uh, I mean, maybe I get easily... Sp stop. Who's opening the door? Okay, it's... <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> Yo, don't rush off ghost hunt busting without Zane. No way was I going to forget your promise, Stella. Zane, glad you can make it. I was confronted with my own mortality for the first time yesterday, so I'm desperate for answers about the afterlife to ease my troubled mind. Now let's go mess with some ghosts. All right, I'm, I'm on Team Zane. You know, he, he, 
My oh my, this certainly is my oh my, this certainly is a lot of humans for one little old ghost hunt. I do hope this means my dear Stella will be safe this evening, and that whatever foul creatures lurk in the shadows choose to be prey on someone else. I hope my house is big enough for five ghost hunters at once. If this is everyone, we can go ahead and get started. It's through the back. Follow me. Hey, human, kick ghost ass. Okay, I missed my special tree. Okay, Pixel. You and your companions grab some equipment from one of Stella's carefully stashed bug out bags before heading towards the junction connecting Oscar's house and the library. Oh, it's attached to the library. Okay. All right. That's a nice little kind of glass corridor there. Wasn't there... I seem to recall that there was a, a very similar kind of setup to this. I don't know about in the, in the movie, but in the book, it. Like the library or the school had a glass corridor attached to it like this. Anyway. Ah, looks like the sun has almost set. This is when stuff usually starts to kick off. I haven't been back inside for about a week, so I have no idea what to expect. Hey! You're not doing this without me. If there's a ghost, I want to see it with my own eyes. Sorry, Mr. Gutierrez. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Gutierrez. I tried to stop her, but she was really convincing. It's Alexis. Alexis is the good friend. Oh, hi, Zane. What's up? Yo. Rosalina. Mm, Bev. She says she wants to come. Yes, I agree. It's best to give this pup the chance to face her obstacles head on. Take it from an old soul like me. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? She loses another foot? Yeah, I've done enough resting, and it's not like hobbling around in the library is any different than hobbling around our house. I miss being there. I miss feeling home. You shouldn't be hobbling around at all. Just take it easy until you're more healed. I've got to learn to walk around eventually. Might as well start while I'm still on pain meds. And our house is one story. It's not like I'm climbing Everest. Oscar sighs. The doctors did say I should encourage you to practice walking. So there you go. Okay, you can come along. But if you get tired or if it starts to hurt, you let me know right away. Thanks, Dad. Now let's get our house back. You all cross over the threshold and enter Oscar's living room. Family photos line the walls, and stacks of books sit comfortably on wooden furniture. Just taking a look around. Are we being... Sp I think we're being spied on right there. Right there. And possibly there. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> keen eye. Aside from the painting on the floor, this living room feels too normal, too human to be haunted. Okay, it looks pretty normal for now. I don't remember that picture being on the floor, but that could be not, that could be non-supernatural. None of my equipment is picking up anything around the picture. But I'll set up a camera in case it falls again. Could be important evidence. You might want to save your cameras for Rosalina's room. That's where I've seen the ghost manifest. I wonder if the ghost will even show with this many people around. Oh dear, could someone please... Oh dear, could someone please warm the air back up? My joints are creaking in this dreadful chill. You think it's her mom? Oh, maybe. Possible. Wait, is it just me or does it suddenly feel colder? It sure does. I definitely feel that. The temperature gun says it's actually a couple of degrees colder, but that's normal, right? Rooms and hallways are sometimes colder than other parts of the house. Whoa, a genuine cold spot. I got to snap a pic for posterity. <laughs> is that it? This isn't very scary. Wait, Rosalina, if the ghost manifests, mostly manifests in your room, shouldn't you have seen it? <laughs> I feel the presence. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yes, I have the opportunity to say the thing. I'm going to say the thing. All right, gang, I think we'll cover more ground. If we split up and search for clues. <laughs> I'm totally that guy, Sammy. As much as I'd love to spend one more, uh, 
As much as I'd love to spend more one-on-one time with you, we really shouldn't split up. Ghost or no, that's always, she wants to spend one-on-one time with me. Yeah, you're probably right. If we discover a ghost here, we should all discover it together. So fortunately, everybody is not as stupid as I am. (laughs) Yeah, titties is smart. That's not exactly the angle I was going for, but okay. (laughs) Yo, once we find the ghost, how are we going to get rid of it? Like, how does one bust such a thing? Zane with the real questions here, actually. Well, my ghost hunting kit has symbols from every major religion, assorted holy books, a bunch of salt, and some jars for ectoplasm. So apparently we're just going to go ham on it with every religion in the world. And if worse comes to worse, we can always use the Ouija board to politely ask it to leave. Because using the Ouija board never goes wrong with the supernatural. Aren't Ouija's boards super cursed? Are you sure that wouldn't make it mad or invite a demon or into the house or something? I think I'd rather not take the chance. One ghost is enough to deal with. I don't much like the thought of opening a door for something worse. Yeah, me either, Sammy. I mean, my belief system is a little soft in that area, but it's like, why take the risk? Wow, you've never been this superstitious, Dad. This ghost really has you freaked out. Okay. (laughs) Oscar takes a deep breath before continuing. Let's, uh, let's head to Rosalina's room. Follow me. That feeling again, like the mines, like the door to the clinic, a dusty, suffocating, dizzying feeling. Something is in this house, though, whether it's a ghost or something worse, you aren't sure. Looking around for any kind of creepy things. (laughs) Teen interests, many boys. I love it. Whoa. This is where I've seen it. It appears on top of the stain. Do you mean this massive blood stain? It stinks to high heaven. Someone just dropped some ground chuck. Weird. I'm not getting anything. It's not even cold. It's the same temperature as the living room. Nothing on the EMF either. That's because someone dropped some ground chuck. Then your equipment is wrong. The stain is definitely paranormal. I've scrubbed it out too many times to count and it just keeps coming back. Someone keeps dropping drown Chuck. It's just a stain, Dad. Can't we cover it back up? I don't mind sleeping in here. Hmm, let's get scientific about this. If you've scrubbed the stain out a bunch, maybe that's part of a summoning ritual. Can you describe how you're scrubbing it out? Was it like this with the... If you all are offering free carpet cleaning, be my guest. Uh, Gretchen says it's a blood stain. Ghost blood. (laughs) Thank you, Stella. Thank you for that. Or it's just a rusty pipe leaking all over your floor. I think that it'd be a bigger problem than what Mike and Stella are suggesting. Have you all tried ripping up the carpet to see what's causing the stain? Uh, That's a good, yeah, that's a nice suggestion. The government owns this house. There's no way I'm leaving a big red stain in the carpet. I make sure that it was pristine every morning. Besides, I kind of assumed it was a ghost blood, which it is. Ghost blood. Okay. What if there's something written under there? Only one way to be sure. Holy shit. She's actually doing, she's like tearing the carpet off. <laughs> this is a government owned house lady. <laughs> Are we digging? Are we digging? Let me help. This is my area of expertise, after all. Oh, dear. (laughs) You're doing the government a favor, really. (laughs) I love it. Oh, shit. Stella pulls back the carpet, revealing a hatch. The floor around it stained in reddish brown. Oh, shit. There's a broken seal around its edges. Whoever carpeted over this hatch didn't want anyone going down there. So now, okay, logical explanation for this, potentially. This is a coal mining town, which means there are tunnels everywhere, which means it is possible that maybe some, like, iron-infused water is seeping up. And if the hatch... That's the stretch. (coughs) What if there isn't a ghost after all? What if somebody lives down there? Okay, maybe I don't want to sleep in here. (laughs) 
there's a broken seal around its edges, someone who doesn't want us down there. If I have keen eye ability, I'm going to use my keen eye ability like every time because that just seems like it's just the most amount of sense possible. Yeah, but how long ago was it sealed up? Whoever did this has got to be long gone, right? There's no basement in this house. At least we weren't told about a basement. And look, all the red stuff is coming from underneath. Oh, yeah, this is super haunted. All right. You got a basement chock full of ghosts. I can just feel it. You all know last month was super rainy. It's clearly been a long time since anyone stepped foot in the basement or crawl space or whatever is under that hatch. There must be a leak that flooded the whole area under the house. Eh, Kanika and I. Yeah. Ra the rational explanations. We're kind of right there. <clears throat> the water dissolved the caulk around the edge and leaked through to the carpet. And it's red because North Carolina has red ass dirt. It's as simple as that. Sammy, North Carolina does have red ass dirt. I can confirm that. That's actually quite lovely. It's not mud. It's blood. Human blood. I tested it. Ooh. Shit. Maybe you <laughs> tested it wrong? Did you maybe bleed in the sample? It can't be blood. Just give me... Right? <laughs> Whatever it is, I need to know what's down there. I need to know what's been under my bed all these years. <laughs> Yeah, there's an old hatch on the floor that someone tried to seal up. We're not leaving until we've explored every nook and cranny. Ooh, now I want English muffins. Have you ever considered that they may may have tried sealing it up because it's unsafe? Uh oh. Do you think the flooding could have been made could have made the house unstable? I'm all in on ghost hunting, but I don't know if I can crawl into another dangerous crevice. I'm going for it. Oh shit. What the fuck? Okay, that thing that was in the door is gone now. Just saying. Anything else creepy? You come into Oscar's living room, you can't tell what time it is, and your friends are nowhere in sight. The building feels colder, and there's something about the air that feels wrong. It's stale, with an undercurrent of mold and earth. You feel claustrophobic, as though you're in a coffin, each breath depleting what little oxygen is left. Hello? Is anybody there? There is no reply. Um, Gneeks! Eddie? You can hear someone, something drop violently on the other end and then the dial tone. Stella? Eddie? Who the fuck is Eddie? I'm going to keep going and call someone. Sheriff Earl. Hello? What's your... Hello? Is this some kind of prank? Franklin, come listen to this. Is that some kind of old-time radio show? Because it's just... But it's just repeating the same phrase over and over. Someone's trying to creep us out. Now, hold on just a minute. This Ain't this the... Ain't this area code from Rotania? That's where I'm from. That's my hometown. I'll be damned. Listen here, Mike. We know that's you. You got some nerve calling in with a juvenile prank like this. Damned if that ain't creepy, though. Eddie? Eddie? Repeating like that. Do we know any Eddies? What's with the Eddies? Jesus, hang up, hug me. Got to keep these lines clear for real callers. We'll deal with Mike later. I'm not calling Tab Tabitha. You can go fuck. Tabitha's not on the board as far as I'm concerned. Oh, it was my cell phone. I thought I was calling from... Well, I don't see a phone in the room. Okay, so I thought I was calling from a phone in the room. Okay, so that explains why it was my area code. Um, Let's look in Rosalina's room. Yeah, I keep getting in trouble with the cops. But why am I saying nothing but Eddie? Whatever just happened was weird, but your friends are probably still in Rosalina's room. You head further into the house. Um, fuck. This is something isn't right. <laughs> this isn't a bedroom. It feels like a late summer afternoon. The air is warm and wet and the scent of flowers drifts on the breeze. Hi. Movement stirs as a figure cloaked in shadows rises to attention. Bok, bok, woof, bok. <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing on my property? Um, 
Costello? <laughs> Did you say Eddie? No one's called me that in a long time. It's Edward Dean now. I'm not a child anymore. What the fuck? Eddie, that's the same name as I heard over the phone. Oh, God, I don't like that. Don't do that. I wish I could say the same. You should have stayed gone, and you absolutely shouldn't have shown up here of all places. If you're caught, I don't think you understand what father might do. Uh, maybe playing along... When I play Dungeons and Dragons, playing along never goes well, but uh, I'm going to play along. I'm not scared of father. <laughs> A flash of pain in Stella's eyes tells you that she's keenly aware of everything that's happening right now. She is in agony. Arf off. I can't. It's not that easy for me. My brothers were sent to Normandy, and now I'm the only Scarlet left besides father's. I have responsibilities, Charlie. Gretchen, can you still talk to me? Silence from the dog. Aww. <coughs> you should get out of town while you still can. Whatever you came back for, it's not worth it. Let her go, please. Oh, oh dear. She's gone, along with the shadow in the corner of the room. You're alone again in the strange garden. Um, follow her. Because I'm brave. As you step forward, a single door standing solitary in the middle of the garden appears before you. Um, walk past the door? The door shouldn't lead anywhere. It's just a door, and the only thing behind it is more of the garden. You decide to walk past it. Whatever Stella, Wherever Stella went, it isn't through there. When you step forward, though, it's as if the room lurches away from you, or perhaps it's as if you, were, you yourself are standing still. Enter. You walk up to the door and open it. Bells ring as a cacophony rages outside. The door in front of you pulsates as figures unseen bang against it. The shaded, the shaded figure from the garden sits in the corner, ever so slightly more defined. The fuck? Hi! God damn it. Junior, Junior, pack your things quickly. Hurry. Maybe we should run him out on a rail too. Make an example of the whole family. <laughs> Jesus. Um. Okay, I'll pack real good. <laughs> Please, he's only a child. We'll leave peacefully. Just give us a little time. They were only children, too. My boy was in there. Why should I give Junior here all the time in the world to gather his little toys and fancy clothes? So this is like in a, a twisted vision of the town folk immediately after that mine collapse, I'm imagining. My boy didn't have that kind of luxury. The collapse. Keen eye. Keen eye IRL. The collapse. Junior leaving. Charlie returning. It's all starting to come together. They're the same person. Keep listening. I'm not... Yeah. Don't listen to him, Charlie. Just keep packing. Looks like the others are on their way. Better hurry, boy, or you and your little dolls here might get burned up. And as for you, lady, what makes you think you're going to keep be keeping any of those valuables you're packing in that fine suitcase of yours? Um... God... I don't, it doesn't seem like, you know, anybody can hear me if they're the ones being possessed and I'm not having a vision. Um, I'm not scared of you. Trust me, boy, the coppers ain't coming here tonight. And what makes you think you can talk to an adult like that? Maybe they should have had you working in the mines too, instead of lazing around this big house. Maybe you would have learned a thing or two about respecting your elders. Don't talk to my son like that. Don't talk to me like that, woman. I call the shots. Now get out unless you want to go up in flames with all your precious jewels and expensive dresses. You're lucky I'm even letting you leave. Am I supposed to be you? 
It's okay, Charlie. You can make new ones, even better than these. It's good for him. Shouldn't be playing with dolls anyway. Now you're going to have to earn your keep just like the rest of us, boy. No more big inheritance for you. Alexis and Rosaline are whisked away, leaving you behind in an empty room. This has gotten pretty fucking trippy. As they depart, the front door stops pounding and opens into a beckoning white void. Before you have a chance to think, another door creaks open on what you thought was the ceiling. Dwayne! There you are. This is quite the maze, isn't it? And absolutely crawling with these miserable little parasites. Bottom feeders. Um, well, let's chit chat. Hey man, what's up? <laughs> oh, you're no longer threatened by me? Good, maybe now we can be friends. As he approaches, a smell hits you, sweating, suffocating flesh with a tinge of the saccharin and stomach-turning scent of decay. Shall we find the end of this little maze? You know what? Let's. Uh... There's no need for you to run away from Wayne. You step past him and walk into the void. This doesn't look a whole lot better. You're outside and it's night. A false moon looming massive in the painted sky. Wayne is gone. The night feels thick and warm. The insects lively. Their calls unnaturally tinny. Everything feels warped and wrong like you're listening to a record fished from the bottom of a pond. Unless your eyes are playing tricks on you, the shadow in the corner keeps getting closer. You poor dear, I've been keeping track of you scuttling about town like a tomcat. You've fallen hard for Miss Edward Dean, haven't you? <laughs> Lie, if you're trying to scare me, it's not working. Or, if you're trying to scare me, it's not working. There's no need to be embarrassed. Your secret is safe with me. You know, I never did approve of what the Scarlets did to your family. The Scarlets? Huh. I thought I was. And what it did to the two of you youngins. Childhood sweethearts, just think how lovely it would be if you could just be happy together. That's what you want, isn't it? Are you mad because Edwardine and Charlie's romance didn't work out? I'm sure by now you've realized the young lady doesn't plan on leaving with you. But it's not for lack of desire, as you well know. It's Enoch. Even if you dragged her over the town limits, it's his hold will over her would make sure neither of you were ever happy again. Just think of what happened to your poor mother and father. Do you want that to be the two of you? The last room, that's what happened to your parents, isn't it? Enoch is one of my ancestors, right? The powers at work here are stronger than even your love could withstand. You need to break the bonds holding her here. Then you can both go free. No more misfortune. Not for you. Not for anyone else bold enough to step foot outside the holler. Kanika mimes handing you something, though her hand is empty. Everything you need to know is on that map. That's where you'll find them. You need her there. Then read what I've written down and be careful. Good luck to the both of you. I hope you get your happiness. And then she's gone. It's trying to get rid of me. I'll have to tr trying to get rid of me. I'll have to try harder. It'll have to try harder. Um... What the hell is going on? <laughs> that seems like a pretty good question right now. I'm sure you'll be able to piece it together soon enough. I'd rather you find out on your own first. That's the only way you can really know who to trust. And then I can finally tell you more. In <laughs> part six, <laughs> there is so much to discuss when that time comes. What are you? I'm a friend. Do you know the way out? I will soon, but in the meantime, you have nothing to fear. I'm watching over you. 
I'm not worried about myself. I'm worried about my friends. Yeah. <laughs> the people you only met two days ago, I'm sure if something happens to them, you'll recover soon enough. It's not as if your bonds are strong enough to leave a mark when broken. Yeah, yikes. You continue forward through the uncanny underbrush. Once again, you find yourself separated and alone. A long wooden corridor stands before you, littered with bottles and rails. <laughs> hey, Zane! I'm afraid he doesn't have long. If there's anything you need to say to him, I'd say it now. Aww. Oscar lies in its center, looking pain pitifully small. I'm sorry, boy. I'm sorry I let my troubles drive your mom away, and sorry those troubles mean I'm leaving you all alone now. It's okay. I forgive you. Damn it, Junior, how many times do I have to tell you I tried to stop it from happening, but that damned snake, Enoch, went behind my back. So you're saying Enoch was the one responsible for the collapse. You're right. I've been using that excuse for too many years. At a certain point, a man has to accept when he's dug his own grave. They may have run me out, but they didn't put the bottle in my hand. Still. They destroyed our legacy, boy. Both our names are cursed with that history. I'll be dead and gone soon, but I won't be able to rest. Not until our name is cleared. Not until you can pass on this name with pride. This is my only request, Charlie. Go back there. Tell people the truth. Try to find proof. I don't know what you'll have to do, but please. I know I ain't been the best father, but I'm no murderer. I'm guessing this request really didn't really pan out if the Scarlets were exposed for the collapse. Tabitha and I probably wouldn't be around. Is that why you were getting close with Edward Dean in the garden? All right, Dad, I won't let you down. Damn it, boy, I may not have till morning. Promise me. Promise you'll go back and at the very least show that Enoch bastard what for. I promise. He watches Oscar's body seizes and falls through the sheets, taking the rattling pile of bottles with him. Such theatrics. What a waste of time. Why force you to see any of this? People always think their own experiences are so important, but what does any of it matter? Run! You bolt for the hole in the bed and dive in. God damn, still in here. Wayne is already waiting for you as you enter the next room, the two of you finding yourselves huddled under a large table. Stella stares through you as indecipherable murmurs and shuffling feet echo from the ends of the table. Yap, yap, yap. They're so lovely. Are you sure I can keep one? They must, you must have worked very hard on them. So we've got to be near the end, right? That music is the same song that started playing when Stella first showed up. Just let the scene play out. There's no use trying to communicate, whether with the resident or your little friends. I'll try to keep it away from my brother so he doesn't smash it, though I wish I could make it move like you can. And you can even do the voices, you know. You could probably make real money if you put on a show for people. Oh, so that's why he's been moving so weirdly while they've been possessed, right? He's got a thing with puppets. Please don't engage with it while I try to find another door. A traveling show, and you'd want me there too? Oh, could we go to towns along the beach? I've heard the Outer Banks are the most beautiful place in the world. Um, yeah, I remain silent. Thank you, Charlie. I've always wanted to see the ocean. Everything crashes to a thunderous black before you or Wayne can get in another word. Gretchen! Creepy. A single spotlight remains, illuminating a trap door in the center of the stage. You feel draw to it, drawn to it. It opens. You feel a shove from behind and tumble through the hatch. It took some digging, but it's there. The map was right. That means there's hope, Eddie. Whatever it is that Enoch did, we can undo it. We can be happy to get... Flunk.
Eddie? Ooft. 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 Ooft, ooft. Wayne is gone once again. There's nothing here but you in the howling void. Do you repent? Do you repent for your crimes? Um. Yeah, just let it continue. You must answer for your further crimes committed by your scarlet blood. Until you do, I cannot die. I want to die, please. I've been alone in the dark for so long. All I ask is for some of your years to pay for the years that were taken from me. My life was stolen from me. I want some of yours. It's only fair. The sins of the father are to be laid upon the children. Forfeit your years and I will finally leave. Well, I mean, how many are we talking about here? Nah, just let it continue. The sentence has been handed down. Make your choice. A smell hits you. The now familiar wet, unwell odor. What an annoying pest you are, but you couldn't keep me out for long. It seems we've exhausted its power. Holding all these bodies hostage must have been quite taxing. Come along, Mike. It's desperate, but it has no power over you. There's no need to bow to the will of such a frayed and broken consciousness. Leave it to fester. What about my friends? They've already left. They're not a factor in this. Yeah, I'm guessing it's Eddie. Uh, well, no, it would be Charlie. Charlie got the, was the one that got hit. Eddie hit him. So he must be the vengeful ghost thing. And this thing was down here. So Enoch, what the fuck? I'm, I'm going to have to look up a wiki. Uh, let's sacrifice years of my life. Or leave. But I can't just leave the ghost here. You can. <laughs> Where will Oscar and Rosalina live if the ghost stays? Don't give years of your life for something so insignificant. Saving. Sacrifice years of your life. I have a responsibility here. <coughs> Stop, don't do this. Wayne is cut off as you're brought face to face with the resonant. Silence. I mean, I don't really see a reason to trust Wayne, of all people. Yeah, I believe he is. Did I do good? Did I make it a happy ending? For the first time in what feels like hours, the earth around you feels solid, real, but also soft. You feel it pressing in on all sides, cold and growing tighter by the second as the soil settles. You claw your way out. Your arms tear at the earth until they break through into the air. Look back behind you. Jeepers. As you gasp for breath, you take a look at the, into the pit behind you. Charlie's mummified remains stare up at you, sad and broken at the bottom of the pit. You're only able to maintain your gaze for a moment before exhaustion overwhelms you. I wonder if it was because he was killed on top of that medallion thing. <clears throat> With the last of your strength, you hoist yourself from the pit and collapse on the floor. You feel like death. Mm. What a foolish thing to give up so much of yourself and for something so meaningless. Have you no sense of self-preservation? There is genuine anger in his voice. It's the first time he's shown any emotion and it chills you. 
You reach for something to say in response, but you're still delirious from what happened and you struggle to form coherent thoughts. Look what it's done to you. There you are. Oh, you poor th Hi, Sybil. Sybil pauses mid-sentence as she notices Wayne from the corner of her eyes. Come with me, dear. Let's get you home. Make sure nothing else happens to them or they'll be held to pay. He practically hisses the words. What? You quietly walk towards the stairs. Sybil lends you her arm as she gently guides you out of the library. You're outside. It's real this time. I'm going to peace out. Back to back encounters with my own mortality. I got a lot to ponder. <laughs> See you, Zane. Zane walks off down the road. The cool breeze chills you deeper than it should, and you realize just how drained you feel. Your legs are heavier, harder to lift as you make your way down the steps of the library, your lungs wheezing as if you run a marathon. You can almost feel how pace, pale your face has become, your lips dry and thin, your hands almost trembling with the effort of raising them to your face as you trace the new lines and furrows that have formed there. Kanika came to get me right away. I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you earlier in the night. I had no idea what we were all, you were you were all planning to do. How were we supposed to know it would be like that? Things have been strange around town, sweetie. Now's not the time to be poking around in the supernatural. I thought you learned that lesson yesterday. But magic isn't real. I mean, it's not supposed to be. God, that hurt. Everything is so... Kanika stops mid-sentence as she realizes what's happened to you. Oh my God, Mike, you poor thing. Mike, did you? Yeah, it's over. Yeah, all that matters is Rosalina can go back to sleeping in her own home. I'm so sorry you had to lose so much to make that happen if I had known what would take be taken from you. You know, Mike, the salt and pepper look is good on you. Maybe this isn't all bad. How old am I? Kanika, sorry, just trying to be positive. Stella's way better than that. <clears throat> What? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'll see you guys later. Aw. I think she took the brunt of things in there. No wonder she's having a hard time right now. Should we go after her? I think she just needs to time, some time to get over or to get to herself. Stella's never been the kind to share her burdens, and I doubt that'll change just because someone goes chasing after her. If anything, it'll just make her clam up even more. Yeah, I get it. She's a strong girl. She'll be okay. Besides, nobody here should be rushing after anyone right now. That goes doubly for you, Kanika. We don't want that cold of yours to get any worse. You better not get any ideas either, Mike. You need time to recover. Um, I guess I should probably head back. Yeah. Don't be a stranger and let us know if you need anything, Oscar. I will. Thank you, all of you, again. I believe it's time for me to get my daughter home as well. But, Kanika, dear, haven't you haven't been feeling well. You need to get some rest. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow, Mike. Cool, neither have I. Oh, well, she's still down to leave. <clears throat> That's good to know. How old am I? <laughs> I'll walk you home after I finish getting Kanika her tea and we can chat about what just happened. I'll just be a moment. You're too tired to say no. Sybil leaves. I'm wondering what would have happened if I didn't give up the years of my life, and I did save just before that point. <sighs> I don't know if I want to revert back to that or not, though. That's a choice. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm assuming maybe he took the years he lived, like 25 or something. Yeah, maybe. I hope you don't mind, but I took the liberty to call your cousin. Oh, great. She wasn't exactly thrilled to hear from me, but I think I blunted her anger as much as I could. Shall we head out for our walk? Oh, great. These things are still around. So I only got rid of what was in the house. Everything that's going on in the woods is still happening. 
You once again find yourself on the long track back up to the estate. You can't help but focus on how awful your body feels. Maybe the walk will do you good. Maybe you'll start getting used to these changes and they won't feel so bad in the morning as they do now. Let's stop here for a bit. I have, um, I have to imagine you need a moment to rest. Okay. Um, big decision made. I'm living with it. And we're almost an hour and a half into the stream. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here. So, uh, yeah, look for part six. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think I don't, I think uh, tomorrow will be good. So, yeah, look for part six. I'll stream again around the same time tomorrow. And uh, if, yep, check me out on Twitch, rotted underscore gaming or YouTube, rotted gaming. Thank you, Sammy, for joining me. Thank you, anybody out there watching this after the fact. And take care of yourselves, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Yeah.